Good morning. We are Wildcat Construction from the Pennsylvania College of Technology. My name is Colin Eaglehoff and I'm the project manager. Today we're going to be running you through our proposal for consort homes. I'd like to introduce my fellow team members, starting with our architect, Austin Ayers. Good morning. Followed by Drew Miller, our code specialist. Good morning. <laughs> to my left is David Foreman, our schedule manager. Good morning. And next to me is Colin Schaefer, our estimator. As we go through our proposal, we're going to take you through some of our project background, some of the design criteria we had to meet, as well as our estimate, our schedule, and we'll be finishing with a video walkthrough of our home. Following me is going to be Drew Miller with some of our project background. Wildcat Construction was uh, given the opportunity to create a full set of working drawings, a schedule, and an estimate for the following parameters. The house is a two-story, single-family, standalone residence that comes with two options. One is an increase of the square footage of the master bathroom, and the second one is the fourth, floor, the fourth bedroom on the second floor. The base home square footage is at 2,300 square feet, and we abided by the 2015 IRC along with the local code amendments of Wentzville. Some background information, our site location is at 802 Caspin Drive, Wentzville, Missouri. The design criteria of the home has a ground snow load of 20 pounds per square feet. The wind speed is at 115 miles per hour. We are in a category C for seismic and our frost line depth is at 30 inches. We are also located in a severe weather category. Some code requirements for the house, just starting from the ground up. With our footer, we had to first find our soil type that gave, a, that gave us a soil load bearing pressure of 1,500 pounds per square feet. That gave us an initial footer size of 22 by 6 using the uh, 2015 IRC in table 403.1. Under that table in note B, it states that that's for a house that has a distance span of 32 feet. Every additional two feet, we had to add two inches to our footer width. That gave us an additional eight inches to it. And with that, the projection of the footer cannot exceed the depth, which gave us a final footer size of 30 by 11. For the installation, the local code permitted uh, R13, while the 2015 IRC had a minimum of R20. With our two by six exterior wall construction that opened, that gave us a um, bigger cavity depth, which allowed us to utilize R21 in our walls to make a more efficient home. I am now gonna pass the mic back to Colin Eaglehoff. Another one of the issues that we had with the design criteria were our brace wall lines. The windows on the east side of the house, as well as the garage doors on the west side of the house, did not permit a full-size brace wall panel on either of their corners. So we were not able to meet the brace wall line requirements. We then dived into prescriptive code solutions to see what we could find that might solve our problem. Initially, we came up with a continuous wall sheathing method. We soon found out that this method would not, be, would not work for our situation, and we then sought the consultation of other industry professionals to see what they had found in their experience to work in this sort of situation. What we came up with was an engineered product from Simpson, the strong wall system. This allowed us to portal frame around the windows and the garage walls, meeting all of our brace line, wall line requirements. Following me will be Colin Schaefer with our estimate. Wildcat Construction has provided a detailed material and labor <coughs> estimate. As you'll see in yellow is the original plan, in red is the master bath option, in green is the fourth bedroom option, and both options are highlighted in blue. I would also like to note that uh, we used RS means for all of our labor hours, and the building cost to sales price calculation was done by adding a real estate fee, a permit fee, a 10% profit, and a 9% overhead. We feel given the business information we got on concert homes that a 10% profit is adequate and that a 9% overhead is adequate to cover all project manager and superintendent fees that go along with the home process. As you'll see on this pie chart, about 50% of the pie is made up between general expenses, site work, foundation, and framing. In general expenses is included the lot price of $37,500. I'd like to pass it on to Dave Foreman to talk about the schedule. Wildcat Construction has also provided a comprehensive schedule for all parties involved throughout the project. We have 93 working days starting on Monday, February 3rd 
and the move-in day is set for Wednesday, June 10th. This is based on a five-day working week that includes our inspections, weather contingency allowance, as well as our signing and closing. Here on our summarized schedule, you can see the task summary for 802 Caspian Drive, and that is comprised of subtasks from our excavation all the way down to our customer move-in. Now on our detailed schedule, those 15 subtasks are comprised of 68 day-to-day -day operations. And within those day-to-day -day operations, we have a resource pool where we pull our office personnel, our inspectors, our subcontractors, and our own crew sizes ranging from crew size one to crew size four. You can also see going through the schedule, our Gantt chart flowing through, and our day-to-day -day operations showing the date and duration of each project. Concluding the schedule, we'll be passing it off to Mr. Ayers for our video walkthrough. Good morning. I'll be taking you through the virtual walkthrough of our home for Consort Homes. As we begin up the front porch and into the entry of our home, we will be immediately greeted by the entry foyer. And as we walk down the main hall, we'll notice that on our right-hand side is the mudroom and the entry to the garage, as well as on our left-hand side is the dining room and the great room. As we continue on into the master bedroom, which is located on the southeast side of the home, we can see this is a very spacious and well-furnished and well-adequate master bedroom. And we can see the entry to the master bathroom and the master closet. Coming back into the great room, we'll notice on the right-hand side is a fireplace and the rear door allowing for access to the backyard. And take note on this interior wall, the amount of openings allowing for a large penetration of light through the dining room and into the kitchen area. We can also get a feel for the dining room table and the island and the L-shaped kitchen orientation. As we walk towards the front of the home, on our left-hand side here is the uh, entry to the basement, and in front of us is the utility room. On our right-hand side now is the powder room. And as we go upstairs, I just want to note that this is the base model home without any additional options, uh, whether that be the master bathroom option and or the fourth bedroom option to the second floor. And we can see that as we come upstairs into the bonus room here on the second floor, that there is no opening uh, to allow access to that fourth bedroom. Continuing on into bedroom two, bedroom two is included with a vanity and its own walk-in closet. This is because the second floor has a Jack and Jill bathroom shared with bedroom three. The Jack and Jill includes a shower tub combo, a water closet, and a linen closet. And here is bedroom three, its vanity and its uh, walk-in closet. And here is the orientation for bedroom three located on the front of the home. And we will conclude at the top of the stairs on the second floor in the bonus room. I would now like to hand the microphone over to Colin Eaglehoff for our closing statements. We would like to thank the National Association of Home Builders as well as Consort Homes for providing us the opportunity to develop these skills in this industry further. We would also like to thank our sponsors, the National Housing Endowment, as well as the West Branch Susquehanna Builders Association for providing us the means to be able to come here and compete today. I would also like to thank the faculty and staff of the Pennsylvania College of Technology for being there for us as a resource to develop our knowledge in this trade further. I'd also like to thank the, the industry professionals we were able to consult that also developed our knowledge further. Now, pending your questions, this concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Guys, great job um, on accounting for several things. Um, the two foundation plans for the optional bath, uh, appreciated that. The area around the stairwell, doubling off the floor joist and uh, um, hanger in that, some of your brace wall stuff. Um, it's a very, very good job on that. Um, you referenced um, several of the energy things for Wentzville for the 2015 code. Can we talk about that just a little bit? So whenever we were talking about the insulation value for the code, right now, um, energy conservation is a very big topic and it's very important to us. Several of us are in sustainable majors at the Pennsylvania College of Technology. So what we were feeling is that while the local code amount allows us to meet a minimum of R13, we believe that it was stronger for us to present something that was more energy efficient by bringing in an R21 value. Okay. Yes. So like I said, uh, Wentzville is on the 2015 
Um, they did adopt some features of it, but some were amended out. So like the fire protection of floors they kept. Um, some of the insulation ones, they, they have some, but not, but I appreciate your explanation. Um, schedule wise, um, we don't have the schedule up, but um, just one thing I did notice was the, the driveway was very early in the process, um, even before say drywall. So just be careful, put that a little bit later in the process. Um, you've got to load drywall to the house. You've got to do all your deliveries and things like that. So it, and avoid uh, damage to that. So. Um, but overall, very good, uh, very good uh, detail, and I appreciate that. So. Awesome job, guys. Um, I like the way that you guys included the radon pipe in your um, in your um, detail for radon testing. That's an awesome job for your basement. I think that was a great touch. Um, your schedule was great. I think. Um, just wanted to touch base to not forget your back fills and your, and your waterproofing and some of your inspections. I noticed that in your schedule, but overall, that was a great job. Um, access out of your basement, did you guys account for that? I know that um, I didn't see a window well or a detail for it, so just wanted to touch, touch base on that and see your access. Out. So we did not provide a detail uh, for a egress window, but we did account for one in our estimate, and I believe we did show it in a uh, elevation view. Mm -hmm. However, there was no uh, detailed drawing showing the egress. Outside of that, uh, great job, guys. I think it was very complete, especially your plan set. I think you guys included a lot of information you can hand over to a framer to be able to build the house. I think that was awesome. Great job. Really, really great job. And what I particularly appreciated was your presentation. And, the, and both in your submitted and then also what you had um, on the screen. Um, I was wondering, uh, Austin, quick question. Do you know that in the state of Pennsylvania, if you call yourself an architect, it, are you permitted to do that? Uh, no, I am not permitted to do that. <laughs> you, you aren't. So just to forewarn you, it's actually, uh, you can't really do that. Um, but a designer, anything okay. like that. But what I really love is just how you present yourself. And so therefore, calling yours, if you want to be an architect, do want to be architect, that's fine. Yeah. But don't get, don't have a liability or somebody you know, coming after you. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, your presentation, your marketing was absolutely tremendous. Um, your overview, your safety. Um, I want to start with your brace wall plan and your offering of the Simpson, uh, the Simpson solution. Who came up with that one? Strong tie. Excellent, absolutely excellent. You have like less than, less than two feet at each one of those at the garage and also at the windows. Great solution, wonderful analysis, and good, good um, initiative. Um, who did the, all of the sections and details? Really, really wonderful job again. Great attention to detail, but what I did start to see is coordination. So mm -hmm. who did the estimate? Great. And then who, who did the explanation about sustainability and the two by the R21 in the exterior walls? Okay. So all yeah, right? You didn't coordinate. You've got a, a section that has a two by six with an R19 in the exterior wall on your typical wall section. Verbally, you told me that you had a two by six with an R21, right? That's a compressed, there's a, it's, it's increased. And then we have on the estimate, two by four walls being shown. Talk to each other, check each other's work, make sure you're presenting the exact same thing. I'm sorry, and, and the materials on the estimate, I saw two by four. I could be wrong. I'm, I the uh, two by four pre-cuts were used for interior partitions. Interiors, but the yes. extra was, I All stand corrected. All the exteriors corrected. were two by sixes. I stand corrected, okay. But again, talking to each other, I know for sure that the insulation is there. Great attention to detail. Um, dimensions, I see that the stair really isn't dimensioned, some other little things here and there, but tremendous detail, tremendous presentation, and um, thank you. Good, I got five minutes. Um, Austin, <laughs> I could build How this bad. house with your plans. They are phenomenal. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for presenting us a great set of working documents. Just great job. So I'm done talking to Austin. So who do I get to pick on next? Um, estimator, David. Colin. You did the estimating? Colin. Pardon? Colin. Okay. Estimating. Okay. Colin is the estimating. Um, the uh, larger series I Joyce. Um, good yes. job on the choice. Thank you. You did your research, you looked at it. Just make sure the plans said the series, your estimate shows the series. Okay. Just make sure there's a coordination there, but I love you did a perfect choice on what you did there. Thank the you. The only thing that you labeled on there is I like reusing material, but I think my concrete guy would get really mad at, him, at me if I took all his footing forms away yes. from him when he's trying to load his truck, they're gone. I'm using them for my headers. Yeah. Be careful with that because you've got to scrape them clean enough and I don't know if the building inspector would like to see all that concrete stuff all over you. So okay. just watch yourself on reusing material. There's nothing wrong with using it. That's a different vendor. He won't like it very much on that. Um, oh, I will pick on Austin again. I'm sorry. Austin, on your cross sections and on your wall sections, you have your wall, your concrete wall, and you've got a hash tone in it. Well, then the walls and whatever's in the background, you try to put all your lettering on it, mm -hmm. remove all that. Okay. Because it's not needed. It, you're, you already showed the picture that this is the wall. You hash tone it to show them that this is the wall. I don't care what's behind it. Take that hash tone off. It gets confusing and it's a waste of ink when you're plotting. Mm -hmm. But remove all that. It's not needed. It's just distracting from it because you're okay. just trying to show a picture and point, do a point. I don't care about the hash toning. So clean up your plan work on that. Mm -hmm. And then this, this, like the same with the stairwell. Uh, when you label your stairwell, it's at the angle plane that you measure to the top of your handrail and to the top of the header height, mm -hmm. not aligned to the top, just pointing to the tread. Okay, it's thank on you. a parallel line, just uh, with that one there, but boy, I loved your blueprints. Um, okay, I am gonna pick back on Colin. On four by eight drywall, yes. on your estimate. Um, I don't know if my, con if my drywall guys would appreciate if I sent all four by eight sheetrock on the job form. Okay. Just be careful, your square footage is all right. It just watch what you use for materials. You know, generally we use four by 12. There are places I do bring out four by eight sheets, but I let the, the drywall guy know where I'm putting it and where to stock it, on which floor it gets stocked at. So just be very careful on those areas. Um, then I'm gonna have to pick on Colin some more. On scheduling, who did the schedule? Ah, I'll pick on you. <laughs> All right. um, plumbing, 521 for finish up. My appliances are delivered 527. Who hooks up the dishwasher? Our crew hooks up the dishwasher. Okay, okay, just watch yourself on when you schedule materials, who's gonna do the dishwasher, is the disposal there yet or not? Sometimes it's with the appliances, sometimes it's not, depends on the contract, but just watch your dates on who's gonna hook up what on those items there. See, that was easy, I'm done. <laughs> Um, can you guys flip to your front elevation page? Do you have the the beginning of the video walkthrough? The uh, just something with the front elevation. Do you have another one that shows the front by chance? Uh, I, I don't, don't believe so. so. Uh, the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. Just be careful with details. Um, the uh, brochure that you guys had showed a 2020 window over the garage, and then a decorative gable as well. So just the fine details. Just double check on that. Uh, I got another minute here. Um, scheduling wise, uh, just a couple of things order wise I noticed, um, especially your mechanical roughs, you want to make sure that you do plumbing first and then mechanicals and then electrical. Um, your electrical is going to be your easiest to run around things because you have flexible wire, whereas if you do a different order it can, can cause problems. Um, same thing with, uh, I made a note about insulation as far as you want to make sure you blow in your insulation a, a day or two after hang. Uh, when your lids have to be up too, you want to make sure it's insulated before you start taping, especially in March or whenever that would be. So uh, just a couple schedule notes that I noticed. So, and then uh, carpet, late in the process is, is possible with carpet. You don't want all your trades coming through with their boots. And as much as you try and regulate that, it never works, so. Well, I also like how you guys on your elevations incorporated your grading plan, how you did your percent slopes away from the building um, to get the water away from the building. 
You're and good. my bad, your uh, estimate did have two by six exterior walls. Sorry. <laughs> there, were, there were some other things, actually, that I did note, so I just used that as an example. It was a bad example, but thank you. And I did miss your window a little bit, so I'll admit to I'm sorry. 